Oh, hello again, and welcome back to the channel. <laughs> Today we're writing Christmas music like John Williams. We'll be referencing music from Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, which means this video is definitely getting demonetized. So if you want to spread some Christmas cheer, you can buy me a coffee in the video description to support the channel. So here's the excerpt we're imitating today. And then the second part. Nice, short, sweet, simple. That's the idea with all of these is to take little chunks and work from there. So let's listen again and pay attention to some of the instrumentation more specifically. We start off with a big harp run and then we're gonna have most of the melody in the winds, upper winds and the strings with a little bit of pizzicato accompaniment and some percussion. Next part. Notice we have these pulsing brass quarter notes or maybe half notes, dun, dun, dun. Kind of gives it more of a, almost like a Celtic feel to it. Like it's got a bagpipe or a drone underneath it. We also have, if you notice very subtly, I think it's a piccolo doing da 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 to accent uh, the ands of the measures. So. And then kind of a cascade down. And then a holding onto that chord. So that's gonna be our reference. We're gonna do as best we can to kind of imitate that. We also should pay attention to the harmony. Harmonically, we are in C major for the key, which I always associate with innocence and, and childlike nature because C is the key that most young pianists start off by learning. I think that's why it feels that way. Um, now we go into F, to C, to G. Very, very simple. However, John Williams uses a pedal point for the most part, so keeping it on C on the root. Until the very end. So we'll imitate something very similar like that. Now we have all the basic elements we need to start a sketch. So let's start off with a piano sketch and we'll do something similar, similar tempo. That works. Let me do that sort of thing, so. That's good. I like to quantize just because. Is that what I did the first time? that better. That's good. Okay, so we might end ours differently because ours kind of ends relatively quickly. Okay, now pretty much similar chords, I think. We want to have like kind of that blah, blah. yeah just open fifths da, 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 da. So we'll slow it down. OK, 
Okay, now again, this is just a placeholder for the most part, but it helps us remember each of our parts. So we have everything we need to get started now. This is again the full sketch. I think here, we could do da 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 da. Da, 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 da. Cool. All right, good. You know, again, you don't have to go crazy with this stuff, but just kind of making sure it's close enough is a really helpful way to get started. Otherwise, you don't know what's important as you're working. So let's start with that big harp run, which I like to do just manually, like... I just play it like that. So... Actually, was his two measures or one? Two measures, so let's actually make that two measures. Okay, don't really do any quantization with this for the most part, but sometimes I will do a little flourish. Now let's take the melody, because it's pretty much the same all the way through, and let's give it to flutes up an octave. And let's maybe make it marcado. That marcado with an overlay is going to give it like an attack. Okay, and we'll. Good. Now, if your template is well set up, you might be able to copy paste stuff efficiently. So let's give it to the violins now and see how well this translates. Let's give it to violin uh, marcato and see how that works. Sounds good to me. Okay, now let's also get a harmony because if you listen to the original, you'll notice. Actually, uh, the winds are an octave higher, aren't they? And so let's pop the winds up an octave. See how that works. Beautiful. Okay, now we need to come up with harmony because you notice it's always da -da 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 -da. Now you could do this a couple ways. You could play it in manually, but in this case, I'm actually just gonna transpose it and see if I can maybe just change a couple notes. Usually if it's all diatonic, meaning all of the same key, you can actually click the notes and just adjust them universally. So this E flat everywhere should be an E natural. A flat should be an A. B flat should be a B. Now this might work for the most part. And I like to pull down the harmony just a bit. Good, I think that works. Let's now give the harmony to violin two an octave lower, and we should have the melody for the whole thing, pretty much. Beautiful. Okay, now let's get the accompaniment. Um, accompaniment, I wanna have violas pretty much carrying uh, the shorts, and they may need some support from the winds. So let's do... And in fact, actually, this is splitting things up three ways with violas is kind of risky because there's not many instru uh, instrumentalists on a viola part. So sometimes it might be better to actually have the violin two accompany with that harmony as well. I think we should use violin two to help support the viola chunking. So we'll do.
Now, I also just remembered, isn't there a pizzicato in the beginning? Ah, so in the beginning we have pizzicato on the off beats. So the second half we can do this staccato thing. Potentially. Um, but let's start off by just doing blum, blum. So we'll do this sort of thing. Okay, so they're doing double, double harmonies. So we're gonna do the same with viola. There we go. Okay. Okay, and then violas. Okay, so let's listen to what the low strings are doing. Mm. So not too much, mostly just kind of little off beats, uh, probably in octaves with the cello and the bass. Again, pizzicato, so. There you go. Okay, let's also get in the percussion bed so I don't have to use the metronome the whole way through. So we'll do sleigh bells, just basically just chugging through. Christmas already! All right. Any triangle going on through this? No, but I did just notice that we have Glockenspiel doubling the melody the whole way through. I think that sounds good. Okay, now let's get the bassoons because I hear bassoons doing some of this stuff in the low register. Also, they're sometimes being doubled by the cello, which is kind of brilliant. Dun, 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 dun. I like to work out those parts in advance. Dun 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 da da dun da da dun. Okay, so we gotta play this slow. Actually that worked really well. Okay, so now we're gonna double a little bit of that with the cello. Let's check this out. We could probably also have the, maybe we have the pizzicato supported by clarinet and oboe. Sometimes you could, again, like I said, you could just copy this up and down the line, depending on the registers. Pretty good, but these two parts need to get swapped. So we're just gonna copy paste, swap them. And over here. <laughs> Sounds great. Okay, um, now there should be another harp run here. I like the way it opens up with the staccato strings. Do you hear that? I think that's really, really cool. Um, okay. Now we're gonna get the trombone, just doing the open fifths. See which register it is. You know? I hear dun, dun, dun.
So let's get that. Um, we're gonna also use this pretty much the exact same thing. We're gonna double that in the cello. And in the bass, we're gonna do the same thing, but it's gonna be just the C's. So let's see how that sounds. I want that to be a little longer. So let's actually, instead of doing Mark uh, Sforzando in the strings, let's make it sustain and let's just record that. Okay, that works. I think that'll work. I'm not sure about the bass yet. Yeah, it's a little heavy handed with the bass doing that. So let's actually have the bass just do pizzicato. So we're just gonna save. the bass is sustained for the ending. Okay. Um, now what about the bassoons? Do the bassoons double that? Because that's what I would do intuitively. But that's not what I hear. I actually hear dun 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 dun. Kind of keeps that little pattern going. So something like that, dun dun dun, dun dun dun. Now I think maybe ha we'll have the oboe and clarinet are going to support what the viola and violin were doing. And again, we're gonna have to swap the parts because this is a little low for the oboe. So swap that, keep this here. Just realize the absurdity of me wearing a Santa suit while I'm doing this and make this spiccato. Let's check this out. Cool. You could also probably have Horn do that staccato if you wanted to. I think I actually maybe hear Horn joining with those trombones. Really quiet. Mm hmm I like that. All right, we're almost at the home stretch here. All right, some beautiful little dan, 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 dan. So let's get that. Dan, 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 dan. So let's see how that sounds on its own. Need a little shorter release on those trills. So sometimes I'll program this stuff manually or adjust it inside of the actual DAW like that. So it gets nice and short. Want these to feel all nice and kind of choppy. Mm-hmm, that's good. And then let's get our big nice open chord at the end. Is there a little da 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 There should be, I think. Ah, we get the nice. Man, that's so good. So I will sometimes do an ensemble patch for something that has like a dovetail run like this, meaning the run is going up a big register and then down and then just split it out to parts. Okay, figure out who gets what. Dun, 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 dun. I think the bassoon can probably do that entire line. Also, I should mention the MIDI for this is gonna be available on Patreon to people at the $10 level and up. So if you like supporting the channel and you also wanna grab the MIDI to practice this yourself, it's gonna be there as well. Almost wondering if maybe it is just cello. So we'll just do like bass just for the beginning. <laughs>
Ba ba da da ba ba. We'll do da 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 da. Da 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 da. We can give that over to the cello marcato. And then I want a nice open sustain. Bass. Right before pizzicato, we went boom. Mm -hmm. Now let's also, you know, I'm wondering, hmm, maybe we just give the bass pizzicato. Because the, the punctuation's nice. And then maybe we we'll use a tuba for the end. And I think we actually probably want to do that here as well. Just to support the low register, because then the brass are actually doing this. Mm -hmm. Give that to the trombones and the horns are going to do. Clarinets will do, let's see. Don't want to double the third too much. And maybe the oboes will do. Okay, almost done with the voicings here. Hmm. Violas. And maybe we'll have the violins do. Okay, let's check individual voicings. Very important to kind of get this stuff right. Sometimes if I'm not sure about voicings, I will work it out on the piano and just play the voicing that I want. That's the voicing I want, so. Let's do, cellos will do this, violas do, actually I kinda want cellos to do thirds like that. So we'll have them do three part voicings. This is a voicing I learned from Mattia Chiappa, my good buddy. So we have cellos doing this. Let's have um, maybe violas in the middle. And then violin two can just do. C and G. Much better. Okay. Let's check the brass voicing. I'm pretty sure that that's good to go. I'm cool with that. And let's check the woodwind voicing. If you're ending a piece, you really gotta, you gotta get it to sound nice. Yeah, don't like that one as much. Actually, we'll do, do, I think that works. And let's have a nice harp roll outlining the chord that I did. Okay, I think we are all set. So let's listen to the final product. And again, before I show you the final thing, you can check out the MIDI on Patreon. Uh, as well as the mp3, I'm going to attach that as well, so you can mock it up to your heart's content, or study it, whatever you want to do. All right. And there you have it. If you enjoy these videos, you can leave a like, subscribe for more, or if you wanna support the channel, you can buy me a coffee in the video description. 
Thank you as always so much for your support. This is the last video of 2022 and it's been a blast of a year. So I really appreciate all of your support. Hope you have a very merry holiday season and I will see you in 2023.